This is 311, Approximations and Differentials, Content Objective 2, which is to work with the linear approximation of 1 plus x to the k is approximated by 1 plus kx for values of x that are near 0. When we're done, I'd like you to be able to discuss what happens graphically on the original function when the linear approximation is an overestimate versus an underestimate. So as a hint, you can compare the functions f of x equals 1 plus x squared and g of x equals 1 plus x to the 1 half. So for our development, let's consider this function f of x equals 1 plus x to the k, and suppose we wish to find a linearization with a center at a equals 0. Well, linearization is just another name for a tangent line, so we will need a point and we will need a slope. To get the point, I will plug a 0 into f. That will give me 1 to the k, which is just 1, so I'll have the point 0, 1. For the slope, I will need the derivative, and because the variable is in the base and I have k, which is just a number, for any of these that you do, we will apply the power rule. So the derivative will be this k brought down in front times a 1 plus x to the k minus 1. And again, in order to write the linearization or the tangent line, I need the slope evaluated at the point of tangency. So I will plug in x equals 0, and I'll end up with a k. So if I write the linearization, it is the y coordinate, which is 1, plus the slope, which is k, times x minus the x coordinate. If we simplify that, we get 1 plus kx, and we'll see that f of x, which is the outputs on the function, can be approximated by the outputs on the line as long as we're close to that point of tangency at x equals 0. So that means the output on f, which is 1 plus x to the k, is going to approximately be the output on the line, which is 1 plus kx. What this allows us to do is work with a general template, and as long as we can fit whatever problem we have into this template, then we can create its approximation using this. So we can have coefficients in front times 1 plus something that is a variable, or a multiple of a variable, variable times a constant, and then we'll raise to another power. When we want to approximate it, we can simply bring this triangle and this square and multiply them together. So, for example, if we look at the first one, it's pretty easy to see that there's a 1 in front, there's a 1 plus an x, so x is in the box, and there's an 8 up here, which is the triangle. So we can approximate this by saying 1 plus the triangle times the square, and we're done. If we look at the next one, it's a little more challenging because we have to first get it into this format before we can apply the approximation. So I'm going to get rid of the radical first by writing that as a power. And we can see that we're pretty close to this because I have a number in front times a 1, and then this should be a plus, and I have a minus, so I can change it to a plus if I make the x negative. Now it'll fit the template, which means I can write its approximation as 3 times 1 plus the power times the box, which gives me a 1 half x. If we look at part c now, which is the most complicated of the three, we can see that we have a fraction that we need to deal with, we have a root that we need to convert to a power, and we have a 3 here instead of a 1. So the first thing we're going to do in order to fix this is we are going to rewrite this as a 3 plus 5x raised to a negative 1 half times the 7, which gives me a negative 7 halves. The next thing I'm going to do is create a 1 here where there's a 3, and I do that by factoring a 3 out. When I do that, I'll have a 1 here, because 3 divided by 3 gives me 1, plus a 5x over a 3, and then all of this is raised to the negative 7 halves. Now let's double check why this works. If I distribute that 3 back in, I'll end up with this exact same thing. Now the problem is, is we don't quite look like this. We've got a coefficient, but it's still attached to that power. So we're going to use the properties of exponents and the fact that these two are being multiplied to move that negative 7 halves to the 3 so that it can come out of the bracket. When we do that, we get this, and now we have something that fits the template. It's ugly, but it still fits the template. So this diamond in front is just this weird coefficient. So we'll say this is approximately going to be that bad coefficient times 
1 plus the exponent times the box. So that will give me a negative 35x over a 6. What I'd like you to do now is attempt your notes web exam problems, figure out which ones you need help on for tomorrow in class, and ideally I'd like you to be able to discuss what happens graphically on the original function when the linear approximation is an overestimate versus an underestimate. And to help you get toward that, I want you to compare these two functions and think about what those linearizations and their y values will be in relation to the outputs on these functions.